Well, as you can uh, see just around us in this village, which has been uh, liberated by this counteroffensive by the Ukraine, Ukrainian forces less than 10 days or 12 days ago, these are Russian uh, bunkers when they have been occupying, uh, mili Russian military units have been occupying these wall regions, which is west and northwest of Kharkiv. Indeed, for they have been okay, occupying for one month to six or seven weeks. So we have been uh, saying it's really, really um, terrifying scenes we have been uh, going through uh, uh, by driving since this morning uh, in these areas. You have uh, Russian tanks abandoned, uh, which are burned down. You can see a lot of uh, cluster bombs all around and even some aircraft, two aircraft and a shoppers who have been uh, gunned down who are just in the middle of a field. But what is extremely amazing here and appalling is like even like in Kharkiv, which is the second city of Ukraine, is that it's the quietness. There is nobody left. It looks like all these areas which have been occupied have been deserted after this huge counteroffensive and the first counteroffensive by the Ukrainian force just to push away the Russians. Now, uh, we could hear some sirens all the night in Kharkiv. People are telling us that there were some artillery shelling not far from where we're standing now. And uh, the wall area is still extremely mined. So it's a uh, very precarious, very volatile indeed on the underground here. And it looks like a very clear idea of what is going on 150 kilometers away south from where we are in Donbass, where war is raging, where the place is absolutely occupied by military forces. So the testimonies we, we have are rape by dozens, if not by hundreds, and summary killings and some quite barbaric actions from the occupying forces while they were here in the, the west part of Kharkiv.